When you come to Palm Beach County, Florida, you'll notice people here come from all over the globe. Hi there, I'm Theo Dorsey, your host for the Palm Beach's TV Watch Party series. So what better way to celebrate Diversity Month than to look at some of the different cultures that are thriving in the Palm Beaches. Let's start in Delray Beach at the Spady Cultural Heritage Museum and the story of early African-American pioneers. Getting close to the center of town brings us to the Spady Cultural Heritage Museum. The Spady Museum was built in 1926 by Solomon David Spady. He came to the area to be the teacher for what was then called colored children. He was a member of a national organization called New Farmers of America, and that's where he met his mentor, George Washington Carver. And it was Carver who recommended that he come down here because Carver had received a letter from a local saying we need a teacher for our children. William Robinson got here in 1900, built his family home in 1901. He was a farmer. He right. would write letters to the newly opening historically black colleges and universities requesting a teacher. And that's the letter that brought Mr. Spady to the area. Okay. The rest of the exhibit is the history of black pioneers in Delray Beach. In Delray Beach? Yes. Anyone who is of a pioneering family can come in and See, actually that's got to be fascinating. Museum, I yeah. want that. I want yeah, my that's own. Very right? Yeah. Yeah. You want your own, walk into a museum and see your family Absolutely. history? Absolutely. That's, that's what a museum is for. Right. It's right. fantastic. This is uh, Reverend Keyes, who was pastor of the oldest church in Delray Beach, the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. It was established in 1896. Is that still in existence? It's still in existence. Okay. Citizens named their neighborhoods based on their physical characteristics. So the people who lived in the sands, and this is a perfect uh, picture of the sands, named because of the white sugar sand that covered the ground. Oh, that we know we go. the white okay. sugar sand covered almost all of the coast. Now, do you have an archive of that? Now, did everyone donate these? Yes. To, yes, you have an archive. They donated, mm -hmm. and people are still donating. We have collections of African American memorabilia. We have documents. We have deeds. We have marriage licenses. We have all those kinds of um, items in our permanent collection. Jazz music has an undeniable connection to African-American history and culture, but the Palm Beach International Jazz Festival, held every year at the magnificent Kravis Center, has found a way to bring people of all communities together to celebrate jazz's musical style and soul. Here's Frank Licari with an interview with the festival's founder. Yvette Norwood Tiger is the founder of the Palm Beach International Jazz Festival, where she brings in highly acclaimed artists to celebrate their love of jazz. The festival takes place each year right here at the Kravis Center, where history is just singing through its halls. Let's head inside and do a little riffing with Yvette. What's the first voice that you hear that makes you go, oh? Ella Fitzgerald and Al Jarreau. I know oh, Al Jarreau is- smooth. Yes, yeah. Al Jarreau is smooth. Yeah. They both were instrumentalists with their voices. Yes. You know? What made you go, I'm going to do this as my career? Well, it, it came much later in my life. After I was diagnosed and recovered from a brain tumor, which happened in 2012. Wow. And before that, I was just doing it as a hobby. And I said, well, if I made it this far, this is going to be my testimony. This is my purpose, um, is to uplift other people, you know, through music. Tell me about the International Jazz Festival. After the surgery and everything, I said, well, I, I want to do big things. I want to start doing bigger stages, jazz festivals. One night it just came to me, start my own jazz festival. And I take pleasure in it because I'm able to bring in musicians who haven't performed on a large stage like that at a jazz festival, although they're quite, you know, talented. That's how you stay. The Kravis Center is known for quality entertainment here in Palm Beach County. What better place to have it? When I'm not going to your festival mm -hmm. and I want to see jazz, where would I go? Great place is the Arts Garage. Mm -hmm. uh, another place is the Cultural Arts Center in yep. Lake Worth. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. Maybe one day I'll have you on stage with me. Oh, man. 
Uh, if you really want to sell this thing, of course. <laughs> so who else are you going to put in the show? <laughs> This year's Palm Beach International Jazz Festival is April 8th. Tickets are now on sale. Now in the Palm Beaches, you can pretty much find any kind of food you want, but if Latin food is your thing, well, you've hit the jackpot. Frank speaks with a food blogger who highlights some of her favorites. I didn't make a decision like, where am I gonna eat? Like, there's so much good stuff. For me, it's like the authenticity. I want to go somewhere that stays true to the culture. Where are yeah. your top, give me the top five? Yeah, okay. Five? I hope you're hungry. I am very, <laughs> I'm always hungry. Good. We're at Tropical Bakery, which is essential. As you can tell, it's super busy yeah. um, because, I, in my opinion, it's the best Cuban bakery in town. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's um, a bold statement, okay. No, I mean, I say it with confidence. Yeah. Uh, as you you can tell there's always a line out the door. The bread is baked fresh. It's three generations. This is like home. Give me another restaurant. La Casa del Mofongo is traditional Dominican. <laughs> What's a typical dish there that you would go in and go, that's the one I'm getting? Um, so definitely this dish called La Chapeadora, and it is insane. It's mofongo wrapped in steak and topped with shrimp and all these different variations of meat. It's incredible. Not only is the presentation fun, but the flavor is on, right? Oh yeah, that crunch. I heard that crunch. <laughs> Okay, what, what else? We got Another good one is La Perrada del Gordo, which is a Colombian burger place. It's actually kind of like a spin on Colombian food, but it's got tons of sauces and like, you can't even fit the burger in your mouth. It's so big. Say, burger doesn't sound Colombian, but it's like a, it's like a, it's like a spin, yeah. it's like Colombian street food. Gotcha. Copacabana and Jupiter is such a fun spot. They've got live music. It's also a Cuban establishment, but it's more of a vibe. It's more of somewhere you would go to dance and, and have dinner. It's a fun spot. Okay, so that's a night spot. That's yeah, fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And what else? Give me one. Give me one. Um, picanha Brazil, which is where you can go for traditional Brazilian food, and you can get picanha, which is a famous Brazilian steak. It's so good. Yeah, okay. must have. European and Asian cultures also thrive in the Palm Beaches. The history of Greek culture dates back to the days of Aristotle and Plato, but Greek culture is alive and well in West Palm Beach, thanks in part to a school helping keep those traditions alive. We're kicking off this international tour of the Palm Beaches right here at St. Catherine Greek Orthodox Church, where school's in session and it's all Greek to me. What am I doing? How many different dances are there in the Greek culture? Do we have a number? Yeah, it's, it's a lot. So different regions of Greece, there's different dancing. And the, the history and the culture of that region is uh, depicted in the dancing. And you can see dances from certain islands in the Aegean or the Kiklades, and very different than the dances that are done from the island of Crete or from uh, Macedonia or Thrace or even the mainland Greece, completely different. The costumes, the music, the instruments that are used, the sound, it's all very different. Amazing. He's got it, he's got it. I don't know if I have anything. One, two, three. 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 One, two, we're learning about an exhibit featuring nine Japanese artists taking ancient traditions in new directions. Right now, we are in Washi Transformed, and it features nine contemporary artists who all use Washi, which is Japanese-style handmade papers. What's the difference between the handmade paper and a regular piece of... Yes, right? the difference is that uh, Washi paper is all natural comes from three different plants. Gotcha. They harvest it and then they'll steam it and takes hours. And then once it's done, they will peel off the outer bark and scrape the fibers that they want to create the paper. 
Wow, yeah. that's involved. God, I wish I had dedication yeah. for anything. <laughs> um, how far back do we go in the tradition of this? Thousands of years. It came wow. from China to Korea and then was brought to Japan, and it's still being made in the same way. It's surprisingly strong. Yes, that's incredible. Isn't it? It's just as, as much as your imagination will allow, right? Like, Absolutely. there's no there's limits no to limit. any. You think paper is a simple, flat thing, but no. <laughs> right, yeah. Now this piece has 20 separate panels by Yoshida Ayami. And you'll see she has uh, dyed indigo paper. And then the black streaks are printed. And down below she has some uh, small holes, natural openings, uh, to create the splashback effect of the rain. Yeah. And as you walk around, some of these panels will, will move just a bit. And that really gives this dynamic feeling. You must get people from all over the world that come. We do, and that's one of the things I really like about it here. Um, we have an opportunity to introduce a lot of people to Japanese culture. This place is one of the most peaceful, serene places I've ever walked into. And you get to work here all day? <laughs> yes, it, and it is really lovely. Yeah. We're a Japanese garden. Right. And so the idea is to just come out and be relaxed, be surrounded by nature, and just enjoy it. The LGBTQ community is also well represented in the Palm Beaches. Next, we get a look at the story behind the International Gay Polo League. The Gay Polo League is the only LGBTQ polo organization in the world, and you'll find it right here in our backyard. I'm ready to train with the pros for the International Gay Polo Tournament. You're a person that liked to do something, wanted to do it, and said, you know what, I'm gonna start my own. How does one start their own polo league? I started the Gay Polo League purely out of a selfish motive. I had wanted to increase my social life within the LGBT community. Great. And I wanted to do something around an activity. I took a polo lesson by myself in Santa Barbara, California, and halfway through the lesson, I pulled up and I said to the pro, you know, I've decided I'm gonna start a Gay Polo League. And that's how it started, 2006. It's an international now, polo league yeah. now? It started sort of as a ragtag informal group. I would invite my friends, they'd invite their friends, and then literally it just caught on and we started getting members in other states and other cities, and now we are in 14 countries. It's incredible. And we host three international events a year. If I wanted to join, can I join? You can, you can, because we're gay identified but we're inclusive, not exclusive. And we also, as a league, understand the importance of allies is, is very real. We're very inclusive of all levels of players as well. We have blended teams, right. but in our higher events like Palm Beach, our level of polo play is higher. Sure. I think we are brand ambassadors for our community, but we're really a high-end sporting event within the LGBT space. The Palm Beaches are a true melting pot with so many foods, customs, lifestyles, and traditions. Come and join our celebrations. Visit thepalmbeaches.tv to watch the full episodes of the shows featured on today's watch party. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Theo Dorsey, and we'll see you next week.